Hey guys, and welcome to a battle featuring two very noble factions, Shetland Apaches led Bretonian forces, up against Riffle Shuffle and the Hailf Legions of Ulfwan. Should be some good games indeed. And it uh, looks like we have Imric leading the forces of the Hailf, so you know I'm going to be a big fan of the replay regardless of what happens. Now we have a really interesting deployment here by the Bretonians. You can see if you look up at the mini-map here, they are incredibly spread wide here, really trying to take command of the battlefield, which they are very good at. They have a ton of cavalry. So in the front line, slotted all the way along, we have the mighty peasant mobs, the good backbone of all Bretonian forces. These filthy peasants are here to die for the cause. They have pretty poor leadership, they're pretty pitiful in combat as well, but they're perfect meat shields and can certainly wrap around the high elf forces and shut down some expensive archers and the like. We have a nice skirmish core as well of two mounted yeoman archers, one of them being the Regiment of Renown version who have pretty damn cool colour scheme all round. They have poison attacks as well, they're not going to do the most amount of damage but again it's kind of playing into this style of play of going very wide and kind of mobile. In the main battle line, or kind of very small battle line here, we have some men-at-arms as well as some spearmen at arms just to back up those peasants and give a little bit more meat to this build. We have a Damsel of Life coming in with Regrowth, Earth Blood, and a Power Stone. And what is she going to be healing up today? It is going to be an aerial uh, kind of challenging core, I suppose. We have Pegasus Knights over on the right-hand side and Royal Hippogriff Knights here, a uh, unit you very rarely get to see. They have been fixed in like recent patches so that they do kind of drop down and get back up into the air a little bit more efficiently. There's only six models in a unit. Their armor pairs in, they cause terror. And they're fantastic stats across the board, but incredibly expensive. They're going to be riding dirty here with Al Beric, who, you know, is a bit of a beast. He's kind of just a cheaper uh, Leon Leon Kerr, but still can do some decent work. He does, of course, bring the Wrath of Manon with him, as well as Heroic Killing Blow, Foe Seeker, and the Braid here, which gives a nice bonus versus large and plus to leadership. Going to be giving all these nearby troops bonus versus large, including these uh, Royal Hippogriff Knights here. Looks like over in the distance we do have some grounded knights as well, double knights errant on the left hand flank. It looks like that is going to be a pretty fun build. As for the forces of the High Elves, you can see they do have the Heralds of the Wind, the fastest skirmish cav in the game coming in at a whopping 105 speed. And they've uh, gone for to say hello to these poor little peasants, going to be running them over with their majestic mounts. In the main battle line, we have a mixture of rev uh, chevroned up rangers, as well as white lines of chase and spearmen dotted all the way along the front line. And in the secondary line, we have archers as well as a Lofren Seaguard, who can help defend themselves a little bit better in melee. And they're going to be backed up by spearmen as well, so going relatively cheap and cheerful as far as the infantry force is concerned. And that's because they've gone very expensive with some cavalry. We have the Regiment of Renowned Dragon Princes, also known as the Fireborn, who are going to be rocking with Im on horseback and I quite like this pick here I think on his dragon he can get isolated up in the skies against Bretonia and on his horseback he does have that nice anti-large so he should be able to do good work rolling around with the firebomb he also has a mage of life just coming with earth blood though so no regrowth or power stone for her and it looks like that is going to be it for the most part we do also have some war lines of chase down here getting a lovely cycle charge into some peasant mobs just gonna be chewing through those poor people and uh, honestly it's almost always a really bad day to be a peasant but it looks like today is gonna be particularly bad Texas Knights are going to try and isolate these war lines of chase, which is a good idea. However, the Fireborn are nearby, so it looks like they do think better of the situation, which is a really well played, but you don't want to kind of dive in and waste your units. Peasant mobs are starting to engage in the front line as the flyers do dart over on top of the archers, which is a good idea. Get rid of these guys quite quickly. And Spearman, yes, they have a bonus versus large, but uh, they certainly don't have the AP to really punish these guys too quickly. Heralds of the Wind are launching themselves into glorious combat here with the Dragonhorn Pot. They're going to get in plus 24 melee attack now, surrounding the, the Royal Hippogriff Knights before it looks like deciding to fall back once more as these guys do take to the skies. Over here in the front line engagements, looks like peasant mobs have all been destroyed for the most part, but they are being used as a kind of weak anvil, which does buckle, but then Knight's Errand will swoop around and hammer into the back of these poor, poor uh, rangers here. We've normally been able to chew through men arms very successfully, but surrounded by brave and heroic knights, they are going to get dragged down themselves, and you can see they've nearly shattered already. 
Nice continued fire as well from mounted yeoman archers across the battlefield. And the back line is just an absolute mess here as Royal Hippogriff Knights do get a regrowth as they dart between Loth and Seaguard. Albrecht has to be a bit careful here. He's getting pinned in. Mounted yeoman being sacrificed in order to let him get out of here, which is a really good play as he did have Lord of Dragons popped on as well. So he was basically doing no damage and take a load more as well. Health's doing pretty good in the early game. Looks like they have managed to swarm this flank as well, take down the men at arms, and beat back the peasants for the majority of the kind of battlefield. However, those aren't really the expensive or kind of key units for the Bretonian forces, which uh, still have a lot of knights flying around and uh, riding around on horseback. This noble has been isolated here a little bit. He needs to be really careful. At this moment in the battlefield, the Hives need to kind of tighten their forces a bit. They've pushed out and destroyed, you know, peasants all across the battlefield, but that has left them quite stretched thin and um, also kind of like isolated in different pockets, which is really not what you want. Knights Errand are going to be getting a lovely charge on the Heralds of the Wind here from two sides. Knights of the Realm charging in as well. The more experienced troops helping backing up their younger brethren here. And the Heralds of the Wind are not the type of cavalry who want to be fighting enemy cav. They're much more of a skirmish force. And they're going to be absolutely destroyed in a matter of seconds there. As more Knights Errand do charge headlong into Lothran's Seaguard here. So as you can see, it looks like the uh, war lines of Chase have been isolated over on this left-hand pocket with some rangers. They have managed to beat back the dams of life. Chaser off would be huge, considering her regrowths and earth floods are going to be massive to the Royal Hippogriff Knights into this late game. You can see the Bretonian forces using their added mobility now to swoop over and destroy these units of high elves, which have been left on their own. Looks like a similar thing is happening on the left-hand side as this noble has overchased heavily away from his own troops. And we do have Knights Errant as well as Knights of Realm darting over here to help deal with him. The High Elves really need to get kind of tighter, more defensive box. Think a gladiator, you know, whatever comes through that gate, we have a better chance if we stand together. We need to fight together. Otherwise, the uh, game will slowly fall into Petonian's hand and the faster moving forces. Rangers do get a Earth Blood here, it looks like, and the last second, but they are going to be torn apart by these Royal Hippogriff Knights. It looks like the War Lines of Chase got completely shattered as well. And it looks like they couldn't even finish off the Dams of Life, so that healing is going to be present in the late game, which is going to be pretty damn fantastic for the Bretonian forces. Helves, though, are starting to make a bit more of a defensive approach here. They are slowly going to be grinding down the Spearman at Arms with two units of their own. The Lothran Seaguard as well, helping push back some Spearman at Arms. The Fireborn are still full health. They have a Noble, and Imric is full health as well. So they're in a pretty commanding position at the moment, despite the fact they're getting a lot of units kind of broken off through the added mobility. Now, the uh, Lord of Life Mage is really overextended once again. And is uh, can't go in toe to toe with Albert, who does have Lord of Dragons popped on him. So not the worst decision in the world. And if the Firebomb can catch him here with the Dragon Horn popped as well, it's going to do some huge work. But it uh, looks like, is this going to be the Trident? Really nice play there. Trident coming in to slow down these forces and allow Albert to get back up in the sky. That could have been game over. That would have been really disastrous right there. As you can see, the Fireborn have been dragged out as well as Imric. So it looks like these Knights of the Realm were thinking of charging in and taking advantage of the situation. But instead, they're going to continue to pull apart this high elf build. And the Fireborn and Imric are going to be overchasing once more away from the rest of their forces. They need to just stand on top of each other and they will do perfectly well here. Over in the distance, looks like rangers are being cleared up here, chased down by that Dams of Life as well as some Pegasus Knights. We can probably come back to the main engagement now. We also have rallying peasant mobs inspired by the uh, actions of Alberic and his knightly orders here. Over in the distance, we have more Knights of the Realm as well as men arms coming back. So a nice rallying uh, attempt here by the forces of Bretonia. The Noble, again, wanted to get a little bit greedy and shatter some peasant mobs. At the end of the day, peasant mobs aren't going to do too much damage overall. And uh, the added mobility of the Bretonians is going to come into play once more. Earth Blood does go down on the Noble and Imric rides out to try to meet him and save him. But as well as this Mage of Life, I'm not sure why she's getting stuck in. She's actually going to get surrounded now and uh, destroyed pretty quickly if she's not careful. It looks like the Tone Forces are deciding to fall back now that Imric as well as the Fireborn are here, however. And the Spimler Arm is going to be dotting in there, trying to do a little bit of damage if they can, but they're probably just going to get lanced here by the far superior warriors of the High Elf race. And the uh, Spearman, yeah, going to start just kind of breaking very, very quickly here. Looks like in the distance we do have the Wardens once again firing into the rear of the White Lines of Chase. And some nice Erendal taking a little bit of damage, but it looks like they have managed to finish off the chasing 
uh, of the high health units here. Should be able to come back and do some decent work. And now that these archers are not protected, there's a massive charge coming in by Knights of the Realm as well as Alberic and Royal Hypocrite Knights. Looks like they are going to terrify these archers very, very quickly. Pegasus Knights also launching themselves in as a two-pronged attack as Knights Errands do charge into White Lines of Chase as well while they were trying to fall back to uh, assist the centre pocket here. More men at arms are coming in and the Royal Hippogriff Knights once again with Alberic are going to charge in. They do hear a Vivuzella in the distance there which means Imrek will blow his Dragon Horn which is going to be doing some pretty impressive stuff and Lord of the Dragons has been used on Knights of the Realm to really nutrient their potential. We are going to see a huge trident come down which does give a leadership debuff and unfortunately it also counts for friendly troops and it looks like it's going to uh, be a ton of Bretonians who do indeed fall back here rather than the forces of the High Elves. Maybe a bit of a misplay there but it did do some damage as well. And if these units do rally, it's not going to be in the world. Knights Errand and Knights Realm just chilling out at the moment, regaining some of their strength and stamina. As Elberk once again falls up into the sky with the Royal Hippogriff Knights, who have been regrowed once again. And they're going to be doing a lovely charge down on top of the Fireborn, terrifying these brave nobles and uh, tearing them to pieces at the moment. The Noble, Mage and Emrek do rush in and attempt to save them, realising how important they are going to be in this late game. Down to 14 models, it's not looking too good for those guys. And once again, the Hippogriff Knights will take to the skies before darting back down top of this Noble. Huge burst damage there as the Noble is desperately trying to flee. And this Mage of Life getting a little bit aggressive and trying to protect her uh, brethren here. But is simply going to get torn apart as well by Alberic once he's done, you know, shoving her around the battlefield. Now if we have a little overarching view, we have a ton of rallying Bretonian forces here, just resting and allowing that dams as well to regain some magic while he's microing his main force over here. We have some knights darting back as well. The Fireborn are getting completely surrounded here. And uh, yes, they're kind of, you know, mighty warriors who used to ride dragons, but now they simply ride horses and the Royal Hippogriff Knights kind of think that's a bit of a joke. So they're going to come in here and shatter the Fireborn. Alberk is getting very low here. Imric's been a bit of a bouse, to be honest, kind of threatening him away and doing some huge damage. But once again, with the life damsel still alive, we can possibly see some earth bloods and regrowths in the late game. And Imric does overextend again, and that's something the high health player is consistently doing at this moment, leaving their heroes slightly isolated from their main blob. And uh, rather than kind of you know, stacking on top of each other, I think, which would be a better strategy at this point. Glorious peasant mobs are going to be charging in as knights do fall back. The peasants will stand strong in the face of such horrific enemies and will uh, charge into glorious combat here with their nice little pitchforks and shovels and whatnot. And they get a nice little charge in there before pretty much instantly breaking. Up in high ground we have a huge fight going down as all of the Petonian knights are chucked in here to uh, terrify away the noble and surround Imrek before once again popping up into the sky which is good to see some nice cycle charging coming in. And this noble is uh, probably going to be done for. In the distance, we do have mounted yeomen who need to come back into the fray, as well as these Pegasus knights. But it's uh, easier to see all these kind of units rather than when you're playing. So the noble has been isolated up on the hill here, getting completely surrounded. We are going to see an earth blood come down, but unfortunately that noble is going to rout before that can really take place. And the mage of life as well, fighting with Imric is uh, going to have to be very careful, these guys, if they turn their attention onto her, can pull her apart of their talons very quickly. You see her health drops about half in a second, and she is instantly terrified away as well. If I'm Bretonia, I'm leaving Imrek to the end, and simply coming over here and chasing away the Mage of Life. In fact, it looks like the Damsel may have a similar idea as well, with a uh, Power Stone dropped, and then trying to chase off this Mage. Abrek does come in as well, perfect timing to uh, assist the damsel and keep her protected as well as allowing her to continue to chase the Mage of Life and that chariot just gets absolutely torn to pieces by the mighty beak here of the big bird. And uh, all these units once again we're dropping on top of Imrek now, where are the rest of the High Elves? It looks like they're all chasing one unit of peasant mobs before coming back into their centre. Imrek desperately needs to try to return to the field here gets hidden amongst these spearmen and really kind of make the uh, Alberic and the Hippogriff Knights pay for every uh, time they do swoop in. But it looks like Imric, unfortunately, he may be the Lord of the Dragons, but he is uh, going to get his lordly arse spanked here by Alberic, who Lord of Dragons was indeed popped on him, but uh, it's not going to save him at this point, I don't think. The Mage of Life did somehow manage to return, but the Damsel back on her heels again should be able to chase her off this time without too much of a struggle. 
Looks like Emric is routing and there's no way that uh, someone as experienced as Shetland Apache is going to let him come back when he has so many flying units. Simply going to chase him off the field or perhaps even kill him before he can make it to relative safety. And over here it could be a little bit of a dangerous situation as the damsel is very close to breaking herself and if she does break this uh, Mage of Life maybe could return but it looks like she's going to keep her courage for now and force off this mage who does trot off the edge of the battlefield. I don't blame her, I'd be pretty terrified as well as all of all these knights and uh, hippogriffs. Emric's simply being chased down now so I'm just going to fast forward as it's uh, you know, pretty obvious what's going to happen. Simply going to snipe out Emric before coming in for the final engagement but with that massive negative to leadership from Imric falling here, the morale of the High Elves falling very quickly, I don't think they're going to stand too much chance. So in come the Royal Hippogriff Knights doing a lovely little charge into the rear of some spearmen, plopping right in the middle of this formation and allowing Elberic to charge down as well. They're all pretty beat up so it's only going to be a very Pyrrhic victory but all the leadership on the High Elf forces are starting to get pretty damn low at this point due to the consistent charging of giant monstrous creatures. And you can see the brave spearmen trying to hold firm and kind of poke down these glorious looking Hippogriffs who are kind of simply just chilling in combat alone rather than attacking. The mounted yeoman archers do even come in as well, and all these charges stacking on top of one of each other is going to break the backbone of the High Elf Force. And that is a Pyrrhic victory to the Bretonian forces. Well played to both Riff Shuffle and Shetland Apache, and a massive shout out to Shetland for sending this one in via my Discord. So I hope you guys did enjoy that. If you did, please feel free to subscribe to see more content and give the video a big old thumbs up. We'll do a tiny little bit of analysis here as well. I uh, quite liked both builds. It was a very interesting Bretonian force all round kind of going very wide sacrificing some peasant mobs to try and entice the hells to uh, kind of spread out and then when they uh, were spread out and isolated using the mobility of his flying troops and his cavalry to hammer home those units and it did really good for example you can see the white lines here did get 92 kills but they were all on meager peasants they then get isolated and hammered very quickly by the hippogriff knights pegasus knights alberic and all that good stuff they don't really make too much value despite this though and the fact that it was a really interesting tactic i certainly think rift shuffle could have won this all he had to do late game there after destroying all the peasants and the like was you know stand together and fight as a single force try to fall back as much as possible after he kind of you know, spread out a little bit too much and keep Imric keep the noble keep the mage of life nice and safe amongst all your spearmen and simply counter charge when the enemy do come at you rather than kind of you know chase him around the battlefield and falling into the style of play that the Bretonians do love so guys, as always, peace, peace, and stay awesome. We are going to be doing another tournament next week as well. So if you want to get involved in the tournament scene, feel free to join my Discord. There's a link in the description just down below. Anyway, guys, till next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.